We're glad you're with us. I'm Lynn Brooks. And I'm Terry Brewer. Topping the news tonight, investigators are on the case of a wife and mother shot and killed in Tuscaloosa County. Now her husband is facing charges for her death. WVA's Leah Knight has the details in tonight's top story. A quiet Sunday afternoon in Vance turned tragic when officers found Allison Whiteman in her home, dead from a gunshot wound. Tuscaloosa County Metro Homicide Unit Captain Lloyd Baker says her husband, Matthew Whiteman, told authorities he accidentally shot her. The call came in that he was working on a gun and it went off striking his wife. Uh, once the officers got on the scene, it changed. He said he threw the gun on the bed and it went off. Uh, accidentally and struck her and then ultimately he admitted actually pointing the weapon at her, pulling the trigger, thinking the gun was unloaded. Baker says the husband was preparing for deer season. Uh, he had gotten two weapons out of the, the closet. He dry fired the gun. One of the guns at the wall, it was not loaded. He, he obtained the other rifle, pointed it at his wife and pulled the trigger. He says not knowing the gun was loaded. He has since been charged with manslaughter due to his reckless behavior. The couple had two children together, a newborn baby and a child in preschool. Their eldest child was in the room at the time of the shooting. Well, we actually had to um, talk to the child. Uh, based on the information we have, it does not appear that this was uh, done with malicious intent. It seems to be a reckless uh, crime. Captain Baker says there is no domestic violence history at their residence that they know of, but the case is still under investigation. The couple's children are currently living with other family members. Reporting in Tuscaloosa, Leah Knight, WVUA News. Baker says Matthew Whitman is now facing man manslaughter charges, but if new evidence is discovered, the charges could change. And this tragedy shows us how important it is to use extreme caution when handling guns. Conservation officer Freddie Ingram says it's common for gun users to become less familiar with their weapon after not using it for a prolonged period of time. Ingram says the most common mistake people make is assuming the weapon isn't loaded. If you're doing anything that involves this weapon, make sure this weapon's clear. Make sure you check the barrel, check the magazine, check everything to make sure at all times if you're going to be handling this weapon that it is unloaded. You can learn more at the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources website for a shortcut. Just go to our website, WVUATV.com, click numbers and links. On your home team crime watch, investigators need your help finding a murder suspect after a local woman was shot and killed in Northport. According to Captain Lloyd Baker with Tuscaloosa Metro Homicide, it happened around 1 o'clock Sunday morning in the Green Village Trailer Park in Northport. Baker says when investigators arrived on the scene, the body of 21-year-old Chastity Michelle Helton was found in between two of the trailers. Baker says Helton lived in that mobile home park. He says Helton was working as a prostitute there that night. And Baker says witnesses saw Helton go behind a trailer with two individuals when shots were heard. If you know anything about this case and would like to help, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers 205-752-STOP. That's 205-752-7867. And continuing your crime watch, a weekend shooting sent one man to the hospital with gunshot wounds to his face. It happened Saturday night on the 4200 block of High Point Drive in Tuscaloosa. According to Captain Lloyd Baker, 71-year-old George Lewis shot the victim, a 39-year-old male, after an argument. Baker says the victim was shot in the face with a revolver, but is expected to recover. Meanwhile, Lewis was taken to the Tuscaloosa County Jail. He's being charged with attempted murder. Also on your crime watch, a Tuscaloosa County man arrested in connection with drugs, according to Tuscaloosa the Tuscaloosa County Sheriff's Office, 39-year-old Danny Joe Barger Jr. is charged with possession of burglary tools, marijuana, and a controlled substance. Authorities say it happened around 9.30 this morning at Edens Estates on Ken Seeley Drive. Officials say they were called because of a suspicious person in the area. That's when they found Barger with the tools and the drugs. Alberta Elementary students had a very special visitor today. It was a real-life Lady Liberty. Stop by to get the kids excited about being a super citizen. It's all part of the Great Americans, the Next Great Americans Tour. That's designed to teach students about the super citizen program. Students learn about our country's history, 
and their role in our nation's future. The program donated one Super Citizen kit, which includes lesson plans to get the students started. Alberta Elementary teacher Carmen Vick told us she hopes this will inspire students to become really good citizens. So we hope that by them learning a little bit about the history of the country and um, what being a good citizen is all about, this will just lead us and help us into that curriculum of, of, of making them to be good citizens. Alberta Elementary received one free kit. They hope to get more by donations. To find out how you can help, go to our website, wvoatv.com, and click Numbers and Links. Now an update on the BP oil spill. The claims offices are set to close tomorrow on Alabama's Gulf Coast. More than $5.8 billion in claims have been paid out since the oil spill. In April 2010, the U.S. Coast Guard has agreed to end BP's cleanup responsibility for all but a small portion of the Gulf Coast. The plan to restore the Gulf Coast includes planting new vegetation and adding new sand to beaches. We have a special programming note to pass along to you. That's right. Be sure to join WVUA Alabama's home team next week for our special presentation. It is dedicated to everyone touched by the April 27th storms. Our hour-long documentary, Faces of the Storm, will air 7 p.m. Tuesday, November 22nd. This special presentation is a look at the people impacted by the storm and their stories of loss, survival, and hope. Faces of the Storm will be brought to you commercial free with special thanks to DCH and Nucor. Be sure to join us for Faces of the Storm next Tuesday, November 22nd, only on Alabama's home team station.